Hi guys, welcome to Pinet Labs. My name is Chirag and in this video today we are going to look at the most important topics out of the CCNA content. So we'll be discussing about how you can earn your CCNA certification by passing the 200-301 CCNA exam. And in order to prepare best for your examination, I am going to provide you the most important 10 topics that can help you in getting this certification with you. So let's get started and let's have a look at all these topics one by one. When we talk about this CCNA, it stands for Cisco Certified. Network Associate. In order to be a Cisco Certified Network Associate, you need to pass the exam 200-301 CCNA. And when you look at the content of this examination, the content is divided in six major categories, out of which the first category is Network Fundamentals. Second category is Network Access. Third category is IP connectivity. Fourth category is IP services. Fifth category is security fundamentals. And then we have automation. and programmability. Now I will guide you with the most important 10 topics out of all the six categories, which will help you in preparing or covering around 40 to 50% of the content of your CCNA exam. So let's see. When we talk about network fundamentals, this category includes all the basics, all the basics that you need to know before getting into the world of networking. So here you get to see about uh, details related to IP addresses, MAC addresses, how the cabling works, and many other basic stuff. Out of the network fundamentals, the most important concept that I would recommend you to pay your complete attention at is the networking models, OSI and TCP IP. OSI and TCP IP will build the fundamental that you need for excelling the networking. So make sure, you prepare these topics very, very well. So we can say the first important topic is the networking fundamentals. Out of which networking models that you need to prepare, OSI and TCP IP. They will teach you how the whole network works. They'll guide you with the step-by-step -step process of how a network processes a packet, how the packet goes from PCA to PCP, the complete understanding you can get out of the networking models. After you are done with networking models, the next recommendation which I have for you people is IPv4 and subnetting. Now IPv4 and subnetting, I would say, is something that would help you in the coming examinations as well, not just in CCNA, but even if you go for further examinations or uh, wish to appear for some advanced levels of certifications, there also subnetting and IPv4 is going to help you a lot. And not just that, in your production environment as well, IPv4 and subnetting understanding will help you in managing the networks and understanding the networks very well. So give a good amount of practice to subnetting related questions. Understand the IPv4. You will get to see about classful, classless networks. You will get to see about different classes of IPv4, private network, public network, and a lot of other things in this particular topic. Once you are good with that, jump on to VLANs. And don't miss on inter-VLAN configurations. So out of the layer two, 
understanding the vlan is the most important part vlan is the broadcast domains that we create by making some configurations or we can say vlans will help us in dividing the original broadcast domain in smaller parts so understanding how they work how they help us in ensuring security in the network and how we can make them both communicate with each other all that will be covered in this particular section that is vlan and inter vlan configurations then after that the next thing that you can look at is the routing section so in the routing section you will be observing two types of routing configurations out of which the first one is static routing where you get to see the manual configuration of routes so here i want you to understand the flow of packets i want you to realize how a router learns about a network this will give you a great idea on understanding how networks work or how routers should be configured with some xyz configurations so you get the idea about managing the network you get the uh, understanding of what routes to be added on what router through static routing here don't miss on default routing and floating routes so under static routing default routing and floating routes are also important sub topics which you should be paying your attention at after excelling the static routing part next thing would be exploring the dynamic routings so the under dynamic routing protocol the one which we have here in ccna is ospf version 2 that means the ospf for ipv4 so under ospf again there is a lot of things to discover and explore so pay your attention to them explore about dr vdr don't miss on understanding multi area configurations uh, learn about the ospf fundamentals learn about the different databases which are maintained by ospf and practice as many labs as you can related to ospf after that from the category of ip services i would recommend you to prepare best for dhcp and network address translation or you can call it as nat dhcp is the protocol that will help us in assigning the ip addresses dynamically so prepare that well practice as much as you can it's a very easy protocol but an important one then network address translation will give you the idea how networks operate in production environments or how it works in our home setups like how do we get the isp connection and we are able to communicate with internet so all that understanding you will achieve by learning about network address translation there are three different types of configurations that you can explore under nat which includes static nat dynamic nat and port address translation after that next is acl access control list access control list will give you the idea how in a normal or a default setting you can manage network or you can filter out some packets specifically by making configurations acls are of two types standard extended so make sure you understand the difference between them make sure you do the lab for both of them lab practice in ccna is very very important any topic which you are preparing should be learned through as many labs as possible after the after the concept of acl the next important part is understanding the security part the layer 2 security concepts so in ccna for layer 2 security you can learn port security you can learn dhcp snooping these are the two important topics that you should not be missing on when you cover the security fundamental section for your ccna preparations once you are done with that once you have learned about port security where you get to see different types of violations uh, and different types of actions which needs to be taken in the case of violation then in dhcp snooping you understand how you can avoid man in middle attacks so after learning about all these stuff the next topic that you can pick 
is IP version 6. IP version 6 is again an important topic to cover. The introductory part is there in CCNA. So you can learn about the basics of IPv6. You can learn about different types of IPv6 addresses which are there. You can learn about the static routing of IPv6 and give again as much practice as you can. Give it as uh, as much time as you can to the labs of IP version 6 as well. Then lastly, an important one, last but not the least one, software defined network. So the last section that is automation and programmability, which covers around 10% of the content, includes this software defined networking. Here you need to understand the separation of control plane and data plane. You need to understand about the different controllers which are available out there in the market. You need to know how things work in production environment, how software defined networking helps us in uh, coming over the limitations of traditional networks. So all these things will help you in preparing for your CCNA exam in a very, very nice manner. And I'm pretty sure that if you learn and cover these 10 topics through your CCNA content, you will be prepared very well for the CCNA exam certification. So thank you so much. That was all for this video. I'm hoping and wishing you all the very best for your CCNA exam. See you soon in some other video. Bye-bye.